It's my understanding we're here today for both preliminary hearings and for statutory bond hearings. I think it, for our economy's sake, we'll just start with a preliminary hearing and any issues that are unresolved in that as far as bond goes, we'll address afterwards. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And then call your first witness. State College Joseph Fritz. Well, please face me and raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in the hearing of this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Go have a seat, and after you're seated, if you would please state your name and occupation. My name is uh, Joseph Fritz. I'm uh, the detective of the city of Bay of Texas. Did you apply for criminal arrest warrants against Adrian Jelks? Uh, for the offenses of murder and two counts of aggravated assault, as well as criminal uh, arrest warrants against Sandra Romero Nunez for one count of murder and one count of aggravated assault on March 30th, 2024. Uh, yes, sir. Please explain to the court what facts caused you to apply for those warrants. Yes, sir. Um, March 29th, at approximately uh, 10 p.m., we got a a call the city of Fayetteville did of uh, a shooting that uh, happened at the Walmart located here in the city of Fayetteville. Uh, when a uh, patrol arrived, they uh, saw a, <clears throat> a black male laying in the uh, vestibule of the grocery side of the Walmart shopping center. Uh, they noticed that he had uh, gunshot wounds to his upper torso. Um, they then called uh, CID. They also noticed there was a nine-year-old female that had a uh, gunshot wound to her hips. <clears throat> when I arrived, I uh, worked with uh, loss prevention with video to uh, try to identify who the shooter was. Um, I was uh, working with loss prevention, uh, I need the the shooter and the female that was with him. Uh, the shooter worked at the Walmart. Mr. Jelks was immediately identified by loss prevention. Miss um, Romero was also identified by loss prevention as she also works there. Um, I watched the video. According to the video, Mr. Jelks is. <coughs> walking around the uh, vestibule. Uh, he's got his hand and he's wearing a Walmart, blue Walmart smock. He's got his hand in that, uh, his right hand in the blue Walmart smock. Uh, Mrs. Romero's uh, at the front outside, just outside the vestibule. Um, you see the, the deceased Mr. Holton, uh, his car pull up. He starts walking towards the vestibule Mr. Jokes then confronts Mr. Holton. Mr. Jokes then pulls a firearm and Mr. Holton turns to run and that's when uh, Mr. Jokes pulls, uh, shoots multiple uh, times from his firearm, uh, hitting uh, Mr. Holton um, multiple times. And then um, both Mr. Jokes and Mr. Romero take off to Ms. Romero's vehicle Scene. Did they run to that vehicle? Sir. Did they run to that vehicle? Yes. And they fled the scene? Correct. <coughs> and did Mr. Holton survive his wounds? No, sir. Mr. Holton is deceased. Did he die the next day as a result of those gunshot he, wounds? He died at the hospital that night. That night. Later. So technically, I think it was the next day because it was so late at night. And what about the nine-year-old juvenile? The, the nine-year-old juvenile uh, suffered a gunshot wound to the face. Um, they weren't able to extract the bullet, so she still has the bullet in her face. She is alive. Is she still in the hospital? or she, been she, she is not. She's been released. Been released. Yes. Okay. How many rank? Well, let me back up. 
the vestibule is the area between the entrance doors and the second set of entrance doors yeah, yes, that it's lead into the store. Is that right? Sure. Yes, sir. It's it's the portion of the store uh, where you walk in and you see the carts there. Right. The initial, the automatic doors that open. Yes, sir. Is that the area that Mr. Holton was fleeing into? M Mr. Holton was, he was trying, Mr. Jelks was facing into the store. Mr. Holton was walking towards the vestibule into the store. When he turned to flee, he turned to run into the store. Okay, so the rounds that were fired were fired in the direction of the interior of the store, is that correct? correct? They, all of the uh, rounds from my memory were fired into the store. And how many rounds were fired? Uh, Approximately. Uh, 17. And this store is located in Fayette County, Georgia? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Were there numerous points of bullet damage inside the store? Uh, yes, I don't have um, that exact information. Crime scene is the one that processed that, so I don't have, I don't have relevant, I mean, good information. Okay. I believe you indicated that Adrian Jelks was just inside the, the grocery entrance doors yes, in the vestibule area after he arrived to the Walmart. Yes, well, let me back up. Did you watch, did the video indicate how and when the two defendants arrived at the store? Yes, I don't have the exact time. It was shortly before the shooting that they arrived together. In, okay. In this and Sandra Romero Nunez waited outside the front entrance, is that right? Yes, sir. And Mr. Jelks went just inside those doors? Yes, sir. And as Antavius Holton approached, did Mr. Jelks then step outside those yeah, see, doors? Yes, he initially stepped out to confront Mr. Holton from what uh, the video looks like, and then that's when the firearm was pulled. Was Mr. Jelks shot in the back? Was Mr. Jelks shot? I'm sorry, not Mr. Jelks. Was Mr. Holton shot in the back? Yes. Excuse me. It, it looks like Mr. Uh, Holton was fired. I mean, shot in the back. His wounds were in the back, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's all we have this week. Mr. Harper, any cross? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I just went, if I could just ask some other questions. I'm sorry. Um, these two defendants were arrested, is that right? Yes, sir. And is Adrian Jepson in the courtroom today? Yes, sir. And where is he at? He's uh, located at the defendant's table with the defendant's jumpsuit. Okay. And is he a male or female? Male. All right. And is Sandra Romero Nunez in the courtroom today? Yes, she's at the defendant's table. Okay, thank you. That's all we have. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Fritz, good morning. I'm Frank Harper. Uh, good to see you again. Um, I want to walk through pretty much everything that uh, Mr. Sellers has kind of gone through with you to kind of clarify some of this. So, um, is it true that Mr. Jelks and Ms. Uh, Romero Nunez uh, were already at work before this happened? That is true, correct? Uh, they both had their Walmart smocks on. I haven't been able to get that definition. Okay, so let me ask you this. So uh, you interviewed uh, Ms. Uh, Romero Nunez uh, uh, after this incident occurred, correct? I did not, um, the city of Fayetteville. Okay, and you're familiar with those reports, right? I have not looked at them yet. So you cannot say that she was there uh, before uh, then? They arrived at Walmart at the same time. Do you know whether or not they had clocked in? 
I don't know that answer. Okay. Okay. Um, so they were, uh, so, so we'll pick it up from what you have watched on the video. So uh, from the video that you watched, uh, both Mr. Jelks and Ms. Romero Nunez were outside the store, correct? Correct. And if I understood your testimony correctly, Mr. Jelks walked into the foyer vestibule area Miss Romero Nunez was outside still. Correct. And she was standing next to the trash can, uh, kind of to the left of the doors. Is that correct? That's probably accurate. Now, in the video that you watched, she is talking to someone. Is that correct? There is a male there, yes. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, isn't it? a fact that uh, her back is kind of toward the door uh, and away from Mr. Jelks. Uh, I don't recall. She, she approaches the man and talks with him briefly, so for a brief minute I'm sure her back is toward the uh, away from Jelks. Yeah. And so the foyer doors, the, the doors to the Walmart, if you're looking like this, okay, so there's a, there's a set of doors to the left and there's a set of doors to the right, correct? Yes, sir. And she's over here to the left, correct? I think she was like right in the middle of both of them. So the trash can is over on the left. Trash can's not in the middle of the doors. The trash can's over on the left. Okay. Well, I, I can't say yes. Well, that's, it's kind of an important detail here, so I'm going to ask you to really kind of bear down and think about this. I mean, I can't say yes, 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 yes. Just, just So, what you will testify to is that Ms. Romero Nunez was outside the Walmart yes, and Mr. Jelks walked into the vegetable foyer area, correct? Yes, then it was your testimony that Mr. Holton, was he, was he driving or was he riding in a car? Uh, he, I don't know. You can't see it from the video. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So, but at some point he is walking toward the Walmart. Correct. Okay. And he uh, is walking toward the Walmart and then your testimony is that Mr. Jelks exits the vestibule and comes outside the Walmart. Is that correct? Yes, he steps just outside. He steps just outside the double doors. Yes. Okay. Now, Miss Romero Nunez, she's still over here talking to this guy next to the trash can. Isn't that correct as this is happening? I believe so, yes. Okay. So, at that point, your testimony is that there's a confrontation between Jelks and uh, uh, Mr. Holton, correct? Yes, sir. And how close are they standing next to each other at this point? They're, I mean, they're pretty close. Okay. Um, so, a foot or two away from each other, I mean, they're pretty close? Even closer. Even closer. Yeah. Okay. Um, then your testimony is, is that Jelks, he's got his hand, you mentioned that his hand was in his smock, right? Okay. And he pulls out the gun. Yes, sir. And then your testimony is that Holton runs into the foyer, the, the vegetable. Yes, sir. And that's when Jelks shoots Holton. Correct. And is Jelks inside the Walmart at this point? Does he follow him in? Well, no, or is Jelk still standing outside? So he's just inside the vestibule. So he, so he does actually move, Jelk actually does move inside the vegetable. Yeah, they're right. They're right there, and then they move right inside. Now, this whole time, Miss Romero Nunez is still outside the Walmart talking to this guy next to the trash can in the video. I don't believe the conversation was that long. They, they interact. I've not been able to go point by point and say, yeah, that's when he leaves, but that could be true, yes. So in the video, isn't it true that uh, from, from your observation of the video that 
When the gunfire begins, Ms. Romero Nunez, she takes off immediately. I mean, the, the, the gun appears to be uh, altered, so the gunfire was very brief. So it's been modified to be an automatic. I, I can't attest to that, but that's what it looks like, yes, sir. So everybody took off and ran on that gunfire. Everybody took off and ran. So who are the other folks that, were, that you uh, were able to see in uh, the videos that you watched with loss provision, prevention? Uh, Mr. Jokes, Ms. Romero, and they were, I mean, everybody that was at. You watched the video, um, I guess, from inside the store? Yes. And, and so there were people that were running? Um, outside the store, uh, besides Ms. Romero Nunez, uh, who else was outside the store? Were there other customers that were in that area? Yes. And they ran? Yes. Okay. Um, you did not interview Ms. Romero Nunez? I did So, Mr. Romero Nunez uh, ran, and where did she run to? She ran to her vehicle. Okay, and so um, Mr. Jelks um, ran after her, correct? They were almost together. Well, how were they almost together? Because she was outside the store and he was inside the vegetable shooting. So, um, how how did they get? Did, did did he run and catch up to her? Was he a faster runner? I mean, that could be. But they were together. They arrived at the car pretty much together. Okay, is that on video? Yes. And what did you see um, in the video when they got to the car? When you say brief, I hate to interrupt, but when you say brief, um, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds? Okay, less than 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, I'd say less than 10. Less than 10 seconds, okay. But there's a, there, there's a stop where they, there, there's an interaction. Correct. Now, there's no sound with the video, obviously, but there's, there's a stop. Uh, where are they standing? Are they standing behind the car, to the passenger side of the car, to the... Driver's side of the car, where are they standing? Uh, they're standing in the front of the vehicle. I, ca I can't remember how the car pulled in. I believe it uh, backed in, so the car, to the front of the car. They're right in the middle of the parking lot, so right. not in the parking stall, right, right in front of the vehicle. Okay, so know, like in the. the okay, so, but, but they're standing, the best that you can remember, kind of in front of the car. And there's a brief interaction, yeah. and then um, who gets into the driver's seat? Mr. Romero. And Mr. Jelks gets into the passenger seat. Correct. Okay. And what time was that? I, I don't. There, there was a time stamp on the vi on the video, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, but you don't recall what that time was. Correct. So they get into the car, um, and they they leave. Okay, and from what your testimony was, they received, <clears throat> you received a 911 call at 10 a.m., I mean uh, 10 p.m., correct? And the sequence of events after that 
regarding Ms. Romero Nunez, uh, what, what happened next after they left? So I, um, I went back to the office to um, initially get a uh, start a warrant process for Mr. Jokes. So we had ID him. And then the on-scene detective, uh, Corporal Bell, stated that uh, Ms. Romero returned to the scene. And approximately what time did she return to the scene? I don't know. Um, would you dispute it if uh, I ask you an objection calls for speculation? Rephrase the I'll rephrase the question. Isn't it correct that Ms. Uh, Romero Nunez returned to the scene less than an hour after she departed? That's probably correct. Okay. And when she returned to the scene, um, the uh, help me out, I, uh, you just stated his name and I just lost it. Oh, Bell, I'm sorry. Bell. Corporal Bell. Cor Corporal Bell. Yes, sir. Um, isn't it true that Ms. Romero Nunez uh, approached uh, Corporal Bell I when she arrived? Exactly. Her interaction. I don't know if she approached him or he knew of her because of the description that I gave out. But she returned to the scene, correct? Correct. And she. Uh, Approach law enforcement, or, or, or maybe they approached her, but, but she gave a statement. Yes. And what's the gist of the statement that she gave to, uh, to the law enforcement? I, I don't have that information. That was not Isn't it true that uh, Ms. Romero Nunez was cooperative when she returned? Yes. And isn't it true that she told law enforcement that uh, Jelks had been the shooter? Yes. And isn't it true that she told law enforcement that Jelks told her that if she didn't get him out of there that she was next? That's what she told law enforcement. At what time did y'all uh, take Miss Romero Nunez, um, what time did y'all detain her? I, I don't have that information. But y'all did detain her shortly after she arrived. Yes. And at some point, y'all took her to the Fayette County, or to the uh, City of Fayetteville uh, Police Department. Correct. Where she was questioned uh, at that time. Yes. And did her uh, version of the events ever change? I don't believe so. Again, I was the one who interviewed her, so I can't answer that question. But what she told law enforcement was that Jelks told her, if you don't, something to the effect that if you don't get me out of here, that's, you're next. That's asked and answered. That's asked and answered. Next question. How long did the questioning last at uh, the City of Fayetteville uh, Police Department? Uh, I don't have the exact time. Objection is to relevance. That's just relevant to probable cause. Okay. Um, when she uh, returned to the scene, isn't it true that she um, uh, surrendered the keys to the vehicle that she had been driving? Uh, I don't know how that interaction went. I was not there at the scene, but we did take possession of the vehicle. You wouldn't dispute the fact that she told law enforcement, there's the car that I was driving. Jason calls for speculation. Sustained. Plus self-serving. 
But she, but you did recover the vehicle. Yes. And uh, you did. She did give you those keys. We, yes, we ended up with the keys. Okay. Yeah. Nothing further. Mr. Jerome, do you have any cross examination? Yes, All right, good morning, Officer Fritz. Is it Detective Fritz? It's Detective Fritz. I apologize, no, Detective fine. Fritz. All right, so I want to kind of go back to the, be the beginning here. So sure. you arrived on scene about what time? Uh, it was about, I was actually working a part-time, so I, was, I responded pretty quickly. I was probably there 10 minutes after the initial call. So about 10, 10? You said the initial call came about 10 p.m.? Correct. All right. And by the time that you arrived on scene, Miss um, Romero Nunez hasn't hadn't returned to the scene yet. Correct. All right. And you contacted loss prevention. You guys viewed the video together. Correct. All right. Was there anybody else in the room that was viewing the video with you? Uh, it was me, loss prevention, and maybe one other officer. I, I don't recall. And was that the other officer, Corporal Bell, that you were just referring to? No, he, he arrived. Uh, I actually didn't see him at the scene. I left before he. Okay. He do you know if anybody else viewed the video besides you, the officer, and loss prevention? Um, I'm sure most, uh, yeah, Corporal Bell, I'm sure. Everybody? All right. Yeah, I'm sure most of the CID has seen the, right. seen the video by now. And do you wear body cam? I do not. Know. All right. Do any of the CID officers wear body cam? Is to relevance. How's this relevant to probable cause? I would draw your honor. You said that once Jelks and Ramiro Nunez arrived on scene, that Jelks went into Walmart? Yes, he was in the, the vestibule, the breezeway, getting the, the yeah. free gift cards. Yeah. All right, and so I, I just kind of want to be clear because at one point you said that he stepped outside. Uh, did he ever actually go into Walmart, going through the double doors? He didn't go. I did not see him going to Walmart proper. No, All right. So he's in this vestibule, which is essentially this covered area where they have the carts and everything else, right? Correct. All right. And then at a later time, that's when you see Jelks arrive on scene. I'm sorry, you see Holton arrive on scene. Correct. All right. And then Holton approaches Jelks at that point? Uh, they kind of meet each other. They walk towards each other. All right. And was loss prevention able to, was loss prevention familiar with Holton? Let's put it like that. I don't believe so, no, sir. All right. Did you ask loss prevention if they were familiar with Holton? I have not asked that question. Yet, no, All right. However, loss prevention was able to identify Jelks. Correct. And they were able to identify um, Ramiro Nunez. Correct. All right. Then you say, um, essentially, you can see Holton and Jelks have some type of discussion. That's all asked and answered. All right. Was there any physicality between them? Did they did they physically interact in any way? Did they touch each other at all? No all right. Did you recover any weapons in this case? And you said that 
essentially these gunshots were very short. I, my only question here is, between the time that Holton and Jelks confront each other and the time that the gunshots go off, was that less than, let's say, three seconds? Less than 10 seconds for sure. Correct. All right. Were you, how were you able to identify Holton? Um, through EMS. All right. And uh, I'm sorry, the, the initial first responder, there was a, an ID in his uh, wallet. Did you speak to anybody at Walmart that um, was familiar with him at all? With Holton? No, sir. All right. Did you speak to anybody else at Walmart besides the loss prevention? I have not, no, sir. All right. And how far, where, where exactly is the camera position that you were um, viewing? Where was that camera position then? Well, for the first, for, for which part? Were there different cameras? There, there's multiple camera angles. I mean, there's yes. There's some coming out of the store, there's some pointing towards inside the store. I mean, they're, they're situated on the, the doors. And there's one just above the loss prevention office, which is actually uh, situated in that vestibule. And about how far away were the cameras from the actual place where Jelks was standing. I don't know, 10, and was there any zoom or anything needed to focus on him in order for loss prevention to identify him? No. Or were they just able to identify him They're able to identify. just from that distance? Yes. And was there anybody else with, I apologize, with Holton? Uh, he walked up to the store alone. He walked up to the store alone? Correct. Was he dri did you see him drive into? I don't know whether he was driving I saw him get out of the vehicle. Okay. And you couldn't tell if he was on the left, he was on the driver's side or the passenger side? I could not tell. All right. But there is footage of him getting out of the vehicle? Yes. All right. You just don't remember which side of the vehicle he got out of? I cannot see. Okay. I know that sometimes Walmart has those security cameras in the parking lot. Did one of those ca cameras catch him coming out of the vehicle? I do not have that video. All right. There is video. I don't, I've got no video. I don't have that video, so I don't believe there is video of that. Okay. So it's entirely possible he was with somebody. We just don't know. No other questions. Detective, uh, was there a video of Ms. Romero's car arriving at the scene? Yes, Judge. And did it show who got out of that car? And it was uh, Mr. Jones and Ms. Romero, and that was, that was it. Okay, thank you. You may come back. Thank you, Judge. Anything else about the state? No, no other witnesses, John. Okay, any witnesses on behalf of the defense? I find there's probable cause to hold both defendants on the offense of murder and aggravated assault. Um, anything you wish to say on bond, bond conditions or right to bond? Hey, police court, um, Miss. Uh, 
Romero Nunez um, is uh, a resident here uh, and she lives in Riverdale, but if she were released on bond, she would be living with her mother. Her mother is here in the, in the audience um, attending this hearing, and uh, she would be living here in Fayetteville, uh, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Romero Nunez is 19 years old, um, and um, we would uh, certainly uh, ask this court to impose a reasonable bond under the circumstances. Uh, we are willing to uh, accept uh, house arrest. Uh, in full disclosure, Ms. Romero Nunez uh, is on first offender probation for a felony uh, out of Pickens County, Georgia. Um, and uh, that was a, a case where she was sentenced to robbery uh, first offender. Uh, and so she is on probation for that. But we are asking this honorable court to impose a reasonable bond on this case. Uh, she is not a flight risk. Uh, all of her family uh, lives uh, within 60 minutes of Fayette County, Georgia. Uh, she has uh, family here in Fayette County uh, and then on the north side in Duluth, but 95% of her entire family is here in Georgia in the metro area. So. Uh, I don't believe that she's a flight risk. Again, we would uh, accept uh, and, and would be amenable to uh, house arrest on this case. Um, we uh, certainly uh, realize the gravity of the charges, but we are asking this court to uh, set a reasonable bond for Ms. Uh, Romero Nunes. Mr. Jerome, anything on behalf of Ms. Romero Nunes? Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Jux is 19 years old. He's a recent graduate of high school um, in Riverdale. Um, he's currently attending Atlanta Tech. He was, um, he was staying to get his CDL license. Um, he has no prior criminal history. Um, he's resided in R Riverdale his entire life. Um, his entire family resides within you know, uh, proximity of um, Fayette County. He has strong familiar support who are here to support him here today. Um, essentially, this is a you know a, a very sad situation, but there's clearly more to the story here than what we've heard um, through you know, the officer. Um, I understand that this is just a probable cause hearing, and that there's many justifications that can be presented at a later time. Um, that being said, Your Honor, we believe that Mr. Jelks is a good candidate for bond. Just simply looking at the Ayala factors here, Mr. Jokes um, has no prior criminal history. He's not a, a, a risk to commit any felonies. He's not a danger to the community. He has no prior run-ins with the police. No, and as I said, no prior criminal histories, no issues. Um, he's, he's going to school. He's a productive member of the community. He's working, or he was working at Walmart, and he does have another job waiting for him in landscaping if he is released. Um, he's not a risk to flee. He has no means to flee. He doesn't even have a passport. Um, his family, his entire family lives in Georgia. He doesn't have any other resources outside of the state. So even if he were to flee, he'd have nowhere to go. Um, and he does not intend to flee. He does want to stay. He does want to fight. Um, and in addition to that, there's no risk that he would intimidate any witnesses here. Um, we understand that there was an allegation here of you know some type of intimidation. Um, However, um, well, well, you know, he, he disputes that and um, he believes that his case stands on its own. He doesn't need anybody to say anything <clears throat> on his behalf for him. And so we don't believe that there's any risk that he's going to intimidate any witnesses in this case. That being said, we do believe that he is um, eligible for bond and we just ask that the court um, give as reasonable bond um, as the court deems. Thank you. State's response. Thank you, Judge. For the record, Marie Broder, District Attorney for the Griffin Judicial Circuit. Your Honor, the state opposes bond in this case. I'll be brief. You've heard the facts in the preliminary hearing. I don't know of another case where the public is at risk if these two are granted bond. A nine-year-old little girl. I know 
We want to brush over that. I'm going to focus on it right now. A nine-year-old little girl was in the candy aisle at Walmart. How innocent, how precious a nine-year-old little girl shopping in the candy aisle, not even near the front door, and open fire in a Walmart, killing the victim and striking that baby in the face. 17 rounds fired into the Walmart in Fayette County where babies can't shop for candy anymore? Judge, we ask that you do not set these to a bond. They're a risk to the public. First, let me address Mr. Jokes. He, he already has fled once, and I'm not going to give him an opportunity to flee again. So his bond is denied. As to Ms. Romero, uh, I know it was compelling to me is my last question of the witness, whether uh, he saw who got out of the car. Uh, and both defendants got out of her car at the time. And I find it uh, extremely unlikely that she would not have noticed the gun in the ride to the Walmart that night. Uh, therefore implicating her as a co-defendant. Uh, plus the fact that she's on felony probation and there's a strong possibility that that probation will be revoked. I'm going to deny bond on both cases. Thank you. Thank you May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And we are adjourned. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor.